Hi friends, today we are doing Unit 2, Lesson 5, Fins and Gills. Before we start reading, we're going to go over some of the vocabulary that you will hear in today's reading. Our first word is aquatic, which means living, growing, or found in water. Our second word is gill, which is one of a pair of organs fish use to breathe underwater. And our last word is scales, thick, small discs on the outside of the bodies of some animals, such as fish and reptiles. As we go through the reading today, you will notice that the pictures on my screen are actually pictures out of your small reader. So as I go, follow along and I will give you the page number that those pictures are on that we're describing. So our first picture that we're on is on page 43 in your reader. Hello everyone. Today I'm going to tell you more about my friend Paolo Piranha and the group to which he belongs. So far, you've learned that scientists classify living things by common characteristics in order to study them and show relationships. You have learned about cold-blooded and warm-blooded animals. Who remembers if Paolo is cold-blooded or warm-blooded and, and can explain what that means? Ah, bravo, right. Paolo Piranha's internal body temperature varies with his surroundings. When Paolo is swimming in warm water, his body temperature is higher than when he is swimming in cold water. Who remembers another way scientists classify animals? I'll give you a hint, it has to do with bones. Right, some animals have backbones. What's another word for animals with backbones? Yes, animals with backbones are called vertebrates. And those without backbones are called invertebrates. Paolo is one of many kinds of animals capable of swimming. Having a strong backbone is one type of body design that helps Paolo and other fish to be good swimmers. You have also learned a little bit about taxonomy, the science of classification. Fish are members of Animalia, or the animal kingdom, just like you and me, but they belong to a different animal group. Today, I'm going to teach you a little more about animals that are classified as fish. So, to say that in three words, fish are aquatic. They don't live on land, they live in water. All species of fish are aquatic. The next picture that you are going to turn to is on page 45. Fish make up the largest group of vertebrates on Earth. Let's take a look at my picture that shows a view of planet Earth from space. There is a lot more water than land. Nearly three quarters of the Earth's surface is covered by water. Fish are swimming about in the Earth's waters, from ponds and streams to rivers, lakes, and oceans. It's no wonder that fish make up the largest group of vertebrates on Earth. Most of those wet, watery fish habitats are salty because most of the Earth's water is salt water. If you ever swim in the ocean, you may get a little taste of the salty sea. Sharks, cod, and flounder are all saltwater fish. Your next picture is on page 47. Freshwater fish live in lakes, rivers, streams, and ponds. What do you think freshwater is? Bass and trout are common freshwater fish, and some humans actually find them very tasty. Come to think of it, I find fish quite delicious when I can get my paws on fish scraps. Some fish, such as salmon, spend part of their lives in freshwater rivers and part in the salty seawater. Salmon begin their lives in rivers where they stay for anywhere from six months to three years depending on the species. Then they make an often dangerous journey out to sea, facing predators and changing water temperatures along the way. They live in the saltwater ocean for about four years before returning to the freshwater rivers to lay their eggs. Their migration often covers several hundred miles. Let's stop for a moment to think about the different ways that taxonomists classify Paolo, a South American piranha from the Amazon River. He's a cold-blooded aquatic vertebrae. He's a fish to be sure. The question is whether he is a saltwater fish or a freshwater fish. Which of these types of water is his home? That's right, a freshwater river. Paolo's home is the Amazon River, one of the largest rivers in the world. Piranhas live in freshwater environments, mostly rivers, so they are classified as freshwater fish. Your next picture is on page 49. Sometimes animals are classified by their physical characteristics. Though piranhas do have very sharp teeth, they are not the bloodthirsty carnivores they are sometimes perceived to be, 
always ready to attack humans. Indeed, members of the red-bellied species of piranha do hunt the meat of other fish in large groups, but that's not all they eat. Most piranhas are omnivores. You have reviewed carnivores and omnivores earlier in this domain. Who can tell me what the difference is? That's right. As omnivores, most piranhas eat both animals and plants, eating seeds and fruit that fall into the water. Many piranhas also feel, feed on carrion, animals that have already died. You will continue to hear about the different foods that many different animals eat. This will help you describe animals. Later, you will hear about the shape and size of animals' teeth, give you clues about what they eat. So, you already know several common characteristics of fish, but there are more. Can you think of any others? I'll give you a hint. You know that all animals need to breathe oxygen in order to live. Fish do not have lungs, so we have to wonder how in the world, or in this case underwater, do they breathe? Look, clo look closely at this fish and see if you can spot its breathing machine. The respiratory, or breathing, organs of a fish are called gills. All fish have gills. They take water in through their mouths and the water passes over their gills. The gills take in oxygen from the water, allowing them to breathe. You will die quickly if you don't get enough air because you draw oxygen out of the air. But fish will die quickly if they do not have water because their oxygen comes from water. The African lungfish is the only fish I know that has lungs in addition to gills and can survive out of the water. We call this an exception to the rule or a pattern breaker. Before the dry season, when the water dries up and leaves a sunbank, sunbanked riverbed behind, the lungfish buries itself deep in the mud and builds a cocoon-like sheath around itself, staying there for a year or more until the water returns to the river. Okay then, fish breathe with gills and you breathe with lungs. That's one big difference between you and fish. Your next picture is on page 51. Think about how you swim with your arms and legs, of course. Take a close look at the fish. Do you see any arms and legs? Nope. So what helps a fish move through the water? Yes, a fish has fins, all kinds of fins. It has fins on the sides of its body for steering, fins at the back for powerful speed, and fins at the top and bottom to help keep balance. Fish couldn't begin to move without those wonderfully fat fins and their flexible tails. Have you ever worn flippers? Flippers are designed to be like fish tails to help people move more quickly through the water. Can you see their flat fins? Well, everybody, you've spotted the gills and fins of a fish, but what about the rest of a fish's body? What about the skin? Hey, look at me. There I am, taking a close look at fish skin through my magnifying glass. Fish skin is very different from your skin. Fish have scaly skin to help protect them and help them move more easily through the water. These hard overlapping scales are rounded and smooth, and fish have more than one layer of skin, just like you. Many scientists believe that fish appeared in the oceans more than 400 million years ago. It's hard to imagine how many fish live in all of the Earth's waters today. More than 30,000 species are known, but a vast amount of the world's oceans have yet to be explored. What scientists actually know for certain is like one drop of water in a vast bucket. Scientists discover more and more all the time. Maybe one day you will be one of those scientists who will discover something new. Our next picture is on page 53 of your reader. Most fish, such as salmon, goldfish, tuna, and eels, spawn or reproduce in a very unique way. When fish spawn, the mother releases her eggs into the water and the male fertilizes them or makes them complete and able to grow into baby fish. Once these soft eggs are fertilized, they are often buried along the river bottom. Here they develop and eventually hatch into tiny fish called larva, the early form of fish. Some sharks, on the other hand, are among the few examples of live bearing fish. Almost the opposite of external spawning, the mother shark's eggs develop eternally, internally, remaining inside her body until they are born as live young, rather than as eggs. Your next picture is on page 54. 
Taxonomists have another way of grouping fish. They have divided all fish into three classes, or classifications. Most fish belong to the class called bony fish. These fish have skeletons that are made of hard bony material. Most of them have a swim bladder, kind of like an in internal floated, which helps them float. Perhaps you know of some fish that are considered bony fish, bass, clownfish, minnows, and some fish are just a few. Another smaller class has some well-known members. As you have heard earlier, fish like the shark and the stingray have skeletons made of cartilage. This class of fish has tooth-like scales, and some of them breathe through spiracles, small gill openings on the tops of their heads. The last class of fish is not as familiar to most of us. These fish are jawless and include some interesting members like the hagfish and the lamprey. Earth's underwater world, Apollo's world, is a fascinating place, much of which has not yet been explored. Perhaps some of you will become scientists and study aquatic creatures like Apollo. Today, we've only talked about fish, but not all sea animals are fish. There are many other vertebrates in the ocean, such as dolphins, sea snakes, and sea turtles. The sea is also home to tens of thousands of species of invertebrates. Animals you may have seen before, such as crabs, clams, sand dollars, and squid. Let's review the characteristics of fish. How many fish characters can you name? Great job! Now I'm going to read you some riddles of sea creatures. See if you can identify which ones are fish and which ones are not. Riddle number one. I am a jellyfish. My soft body has no bones, and I have neither gills nor lungs for breathing. Oxygen moves easily through my skin. Sometimes I lay eggs, but I may also give live birth. I am cold-blooded and will surely die if left out of water. Am I a fish? No, I am not a fish. Even though the word is in my name, I am classified as an invertebrate. Riddle number two. I am a cold-blooded eel. My slimy snake-like body is covered in scales and hides my backbone from view. I have gills and fins and I lay my eggs in the water where I live. Am I a fish? Yes, I am a fish. Riddle number three. I am a seahorse. My long body is encased in bony rings. I breathe with gills and my fins help me glide through the water. I am the male and I carry eggs in my pouch until they are ready to hatch. Am I a fish? Yes, I am a fish. Riddle number four. I am a whale, one of the largest animals of the sea. I breathe with lungs and give birth to live babies. Even though I am not covered in hair, I do have a few bristles of hair here and there on my head. No, I am not a fish, but I am a vertebrae. I am a mammal. Sorting aquatic creatures is not as easy as it looks. Next time, things will be even more interesting as we learn about some aquatic animals that can live on land as well. How do you think they can do that? You will find out more the next time we meet. That is the end of our reading for today, friends. You may move on to Unit 2, Lesson 5, Google Form.